Today is the first Sunday after Easter. This Sunday's gospel passage is the gospel according to St. John, chapter 20, verses 19 to 29. We see in today's gospel, in today's gospel passage, Jesus appearing to his disciples when Thomas is not there. Of the four Gospels, John alone described this event. And he described this event so elaborately. Humanly speaking, the response of Thomas is so natural. He really wanted to see Jesus. When he heard the news from other disciples that Jesus appeared to them, he was desperate. He was disappointed. That was why he said, I will not believe unless I get a personal experience. We sometimes become too much focused on one aspect of this gospel passage, the doubt of Thomas, and neglect the important, pas the important aspect that is the faith of Thomas. What a great faith it is indeed. For he professes Jesus Christ to be both Lord and God, both God and man. When confronted with the reality of the resurrection, Saint Thomas confesses that my Lord and my God. Saint Augustine says, Thomas saw and touched the man and acknowledged the God whom he neither saw nor touched. The doubt on the part of Thomas is not a final doubt. Rather, it is a test to purify his faith in Christ. It was an open doubt. It was open to clarification. It was open to truth. It was open to confirmation. It was open to any sort of criticism. That was why he was led to a transformation. We cannot speak of Thomas' doubt unless we speak of his faith. Pope Emeritus Benedict XVI says in one of his books about the faith of St. Thomas. He says, the most splendid profession of faith in the New Testament is the confession of St. Thomas. According to him, St. Thomas teaches us three lessons. Let our doubts be open. Let's, let, let our doubts be open. Let it be open to truth. Let it be open to correction. Let it be open to confirmation and transformation. Sometimes we may have doubts in the journey of our faith life. We may have doubt in our family lives. We may have doubts in our friendships. But those doubts should be open to any sort of correction and confirmation and clarification. Secondly, Thomas comforts our insecurities. We also feel sometimes that we are insecure. We have lots of worries. We have lots of tensions, stresses, and all problems in our lives. But St. Thomas tells us, look at Jesus, look at the risen Lord, and believe that you may find fulfillment in Him. Finally, mature faith needs no vindication. It goes beyond the empirical to the transcendental. It goes beyond the earthly to the eternal. It goes beyond the intelligible to the incomprehensible. It needs no proof 
in the sacrament of Eucharist, the risen Lord is present to us. We may not see his physical human body, but we see the risen Lord in the two species of the bread and wine. And we worship him and adore him. Let us fall down before him and confess and say, as St. Thomas said, my Lord and my God. Amen.